Hi, I'm Dea Schlossberg, the director, producer, and cinematographer of The Story of Plastic. Um, and I'm very thankful for uh, being able to screen it here, and I hope you have enjoyed it. Um, so just for, to answer a few questions about the film and the making of. So the film was financed by, um, because we worked with The Story of Stuff Project, which is a nonprofit and has a broad um, uh, network of, of supporters and a large global community. Um, they were able to, to tap into some of their donors and um, apply for uh, some grants and all of the funding for the film ended up coming from um, soft sources like that, donors, grants. Um, yeah, and so no investment, nothing we had to pay back. Um, because everybody who supported it financially was um, very much for the, the cause. Um, it took three years to, to produce it once we actually got um, up and running. We were kind of in a pre-production stage for several years before then, um, doing research, kind of laying the groundwork, developing relationships, um, seeing how the 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 whole scene was changing and um, and kind of hit the ground running uh, because of all that pre work that had gone into it um, about three years before release. Um, so at that point, we started researching, planning more in earnest, and then spent about a year filming on location and then about a year editing. So the historical material took a lot of time to dig up and um, a lot of time on the part of uh, our two amazing, brilliant editors, Tony Hale and Brian Wilson, along with um, archival help from my husband, actually, Conrad Shaw. Um, and the three of them got really good at, at um, knowing where to find things and where to dig deeper. Um, and actually, it was all just research on their part and not, we didn't really have to collaborate with um, any official archival um, organization or business or anything uh, and it all ended up being fair use. I mean we had to make a fair use argument for each clip which was quite um, time intensive um, but rights to those clips weren't an issue um, because of the fair use doctrine. So I'm assuming the prison sentence is referring to when I was arrested in 2016 for filming the shutdown of the Keystone Pipeline in North Dakota. Um, I was charged with several felonies and a misdemeanor and um, the charges totaled 45 years um, worth of a sentence um, just, for, just for filming and not for breaking any laws. Um, but thankfully, um, about a year later, those charges were dropped and my record was clear. Um, so that kind of, that whole ordeal, uh, made me pretty, pretty wary for a while, but then just underscored my desire to get these stories out there. Um, of, of fossil fuel and petrochemical um, control and influence on government, on democracy, on um, the health of, of the environment and the health of the communities that um, live near all these sites of extraction and production. Um, oh, and any attempts to stop me and my crew from work? Um, not, not any formal attempts. Um, we were tracked a couple times when we were filming 
around um, fracking sites or around production facilities um, in Texas, um, asked by, by workers or, or managers what we were doing, asked if we could leave. Um, we, had to, we had to say repeatedly, like, this is a public road, we're allowed to film here, um, ensure them that we were just documenting and we were within our rights. Um, so they weren't, they weren't thrilled that we were there filming, but we made sure to do it the right way. Um, I mean, they're, yeah, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> um, so unfortunately, uh, we, I, I've not been able to, to screen the film um, in person in any other parts of the world. Um, I've, because of the global pandemic, um, we were able to release in the US in person last October um, at the Mill Valley Film Festival. And then had a few great festival screenings in the US before everything went virtual um, in the spring of last, this past year. Um, so I've done a lot of virtual Q and A's um, which have been wonderful and um, I think might be a silver lining to come out of the releasing a film in a, in a global pandemic. Um, that, that it seems like more people had access to it because so many festivals had to go virtual. Um, so so those, those Q and A's, that response has been wonderful um, all over the world, but it, I, it's harder for me, you know, not being in the audience during the film to um, get a strong sense of, of reactions and which, which parts of the film are hitting the hardest in which part, parts of the world and or what, what types of audiences. Um, but overwhelmingly, it's been really positive all around. Um, in Europe specifically, I would say people are more aware of um, uh, legislation because I think the EU is well. I don't. I don't think I know the EU is way further along in uh, legislation to curtail plastics issues um, than we are here in the U.S. So, so I think that citizenry um, in Europe is is just more familiar with those types of policies. But generally, yeah, people people have been very positive. Well, first of all, thank you so much. Um, it's an honor to be nominated for both of those, in both of those categories. Um, and as far as how important nominations and awards are, um, I think they, I mean, I think they're very important for the film and that I, I do believe that they help, help drive more viewers to it. Um, festivals have weight as um, like gatekeepers and um, influencers of, uh, of, of taste. They're like, um, they can vouch for, for the quality of something. So if, if you see that a film has been nominated for or won awards, then um, there's less of a question of you deciding to, to watch it. You'll be more likely to watch it, I think. So in that regard, I think um, awards are, can be very important and have their place. Um, personally, it's really nice. Um, and I, I appreciate that um, all, the, all the years of work of our whole incredible team um, is, is recognized. Um, but I don't, um, that's not a motivating factor in how I make anything or, or that I make anything in the first place. It's just, um, really nice. Uh, so that's it for the questions. Thank you again for watching the film and I hope you enjoyed it. 
Um, if you have further questions about the film, you can go to storyofplastic.org. And if you have further questions about plastics and the global movement um, to, to stop the production and, and problems related to plastic, um, you can go to breakfreefromplastic.org and find a, a local or doesn't have to be local now, everything's virtual anyway, but um, an organization that you, um, that you feel connected to and want to work with and plug in, get involved. There's lots of opportunities. Also, since I know you're editing this and you can cut this out if you want, um, this uh, on my chin uh, isn't usually there. I took a bad fall while trail running the other day and um, it's kind of embarrassing. I have, happen to have a whole lot of Q and A's and panels this week, so that's that. All right, thank you again and um, take care.